Hello mga kababayan, welcome to my channel. Uh, today, uh, i-discuss ko yung kung paano mag-process ng application uh, from uh, Middle East. Kung paano ang proseso papuntang Canada. So, meron kasi akong isang kaibigan. Just keep in mind na dito sa Canada, um, kada province ay meron silang iba't ibang programs or streams kung paano ka maka pag-apply as immigrants. So, kasama na dun yung as workers. Okay. So, yung kakilala ko, um, nag-apply siya under parang express entry na ang dating. So, pag sinabi mong express entry, uh, mostly yun yung mga under doon yung mga skilled workers. Skilled workers, yun yung mga engineers, um, teachers, cooks, supervisors, managers, etc. So, yun. So, yung kasama ko, galing siya ng Dubai. Pero, yung application niya or pag-process or visa is located in Dubai din. So, later, i-explain ko sa inyo kung saan exactly yung location na. Ang pinaka-importante po sa lahat um, na you should consider is yung pag uh, apply ng, or pag uh, prepare ng IELTS or yung English exam and then yung yung ika tinatawag or yung education credential assessment so first yung IELTS so I know may idea na kayo yung English exam so isa yun sa requirement sa mga immigrants papuntang Canada so mostly in other countries din naman US, Australia New Zealand kasi yung IELTS yung mag assess ng English proficiency ng immigrants ang IELTS during exam meron siyang four components so yung speaking writing reading and listening so sa exam ang overall na passing score is 6.5 and then yung average uh, score per component is 6 so yun yung requirements sa IELTS pangalawa is yung ika or yung tinatawag na education credential assessment so, yung ika, yun yung um, requirement naman para ma-assess yung credentials mo um, during high school or college level of education in Canada. Ang IRCC or yung Immigration Refugee Citizenship Canada, um, meron silang third... Uh, uh, body na na dinesignate para uh, mag-assess ng credentials ng mga immigrants. So, ito yung West World Education Services. So, yung West sila yung nag-provide uh, ng ika Base dun sa kaibigan ko, Sabi niya, so once meron ka ng IELTS, meron ka ng ika galing sa West, uh, you can start uh, looking for job. So after niya makompleto yung dalawa sa pinaka-importating uh, requirement, which is yung IELTS at yung ika, nag-try siyang mag-search or mag-job hunt online. So, yun. After 6 months of 
looking for a job or employer, nakahanap siya dito sa Canada. Okay, so after niyang makahanap ng employer, pinakasas yung application and then schedule siya ng uh, interview. Yung interview, ang nag-contact na nun, yung province, which is saan siya manonominate. So, kaya nga nasabi ko nung una, kada province dito sa Canada, may iba-ibang streams sila ng immigration or rules. Yun. I-process yung interview niya through Skype. Then, after nung interview, and then magkaroon ng decision, naging okay yung interview niya, nag-send sila sa kakilala ko ng, ng letters na katunayan na nag-undergo na siya ng interview and then he passed the interview and then sinama niya yung letters na yun uh, and then he submitted it together with the expression of interest so dito kasi sa uh, application niya specific dun sa skilled worker overseas then specific dun sa province uh, makakapag uh, pwede na siyang mag-apply ng expression of interest yung expression of interest yun yung uh, uh, parang initial uh, submission ng ano niya ng application so doon i-assess yung yung Pointing system kasi pala yung, hindi ko nabanggit kanina, pointing system yung mga yari dun sa expression of interest. So, sa education, may kakaroon ng points, yung work experience, age, and then other factors like yung, yung funds niya or savings, money. Money, kasama rin sa, na, Uh, bibigyan ng points yun. Yun, nag-submit na siya ng expression of interest together with the letter <clears throat> or letters na binigay sa kanya ng officer after niyang maipasa yung nomination interview dun sa province. And then, since nakakuha naman siya ng employer through online and then naging maayos yung proseso. After nun, so after niya may submit yung expression of interest, naisama siyang ma-draw last April 2018, which is last year. So yung draw kasi, tinatawag, yun yung pagka-submit mo ng expression of interest, magsasubmit yung mga applicants ng initial application. So, twice a month, nagkakaroon ng draw yung um, stream, specific application na kung saan nag-submit yung kakilala namin. So, nagsiset yung province ng score o points twice a month. And then, pag na-hit ng applicant yung score based dun sa na-submit niyang expression of interest, kung pumasok yung score niya or above, automatic may sasama siya. Kasama siya sa draw. So, ang nangyari is, pag submit na ng expression of interest together with the letter from the officer, na-draw siya kaagad last year, April 2018. Luckily, after a few days, na-issue naman siya or nabigyan ng letter of advice to apply. So, that's one good point. Kasi if ikaw na issue ng letter of advice to apply dun sa application, ibig sabihin, kinonsider nila yung application mo. Nagsubmit siya ng expression of interest April 2018, last year. And then, few days later, uh, na issue siya ng letter of advice to apply. So, if um, uh, issue ang ng letter of advice to apply, that means you have to make a full application na. So, mas maraming uh, paperwork. So, sa eh, letter of advice to apply, 
dito na kailangan yung mga supporting details or documents na na-declare nung una dun sa expression of interest. So, from April 2018, um, nag-take siya ng enough time para i-gather yung mga information and to make sure na before niya i-pass yung full application is detailed na yung nandun sa forms or mga signatures na kailangan or supporting documents. So, by June 2018, naisabit niya na yung kumpletong application niya. Then, surprisingly, na-receive niya yung nomination certificate or letter galing dun sa province. Yun yung uh, official document or katunayan na uh, na-approve yung nomination niya dito sa Canada. Na nominate na siya ng province. So, bakit importante? Kasi official document yon and then yun magpapatunay na pwede na siyang mag-apply or mag-proceed ng application as permanent residence. And then yun, everything goes smooth, mabilis, kasi nga under siya ng skilled worker overseas. Ang labas nun is parang skill, uh, express entry. If you do some research online, um, you will notice na ang express entry talaga mabilis ang processing. Kasi uh, pinapriority nila yung mga skilled workers which is in demand ngayon sa Canada or yung mga jobs na uh, kailangan mag-fill kasi um, naubusan ng <clears throat> workers inside Canada. So, yun. Uh, yun yung naging process nung kakilala ko sa uh, dito sa Canada. Na, which is galing ng Middle East. So, ano yung advantage? So, pag galing ka ng ibang bansa, example na nga sa Middle East, uh, based on him also, mas less yung paperwork and then saka mas mabilis yung process unlike sa Pinas kasi yung mag uh, you need to apply pa ng OEC or yung Overseas Employment Certificate bakit? kasi yun yung isang nagiging dahilan kung bakit nagtatagal yung mga applicant papuntang Canada sa Pinas mag apply ka ng PIDOS, lalo na yung OEC talagang matagal yun Tapos minsan parang inaarang pa sa immigration. So yun, sa Middle East, just to sum up everything, ang kailangan lang na ma-process is yung uh, visa and then nomination paper plus the medical of course. Uh, yun na lang siguro yung magiging expense mo rin extra. Just additional info din pala, uh, sabi nung kaibigan ko, Ang visa processing ng Canada sa Middle East is sa Abu Dhabi lang, which is sa UAE. And then, except dun sa PR application. Kasi if magagaling ka ng Middle East, and then you're applying for permanent residence in Canada, ang magpa-process mo or, or idadirect yung application mo sa London, sa UK visa. Pero kapag um, visa application lang, doon na siya ipaprocess sa UAE, Abu Dhabi. So, it covers yung buong Middle East doon ang application. So, yun. Uh, sana kahit papano may natutunan kayo ngayon, if if you have some questions and uh, mga topic na gusto nyo itanong or na may discuss ko in the future, just comment down below. That's my wife. Very supportive. See you. Salamat po.